Hey what's up guys, back again with another video in the Java series. This time I'm going to show you every way which you can create a string object. I just want the brain psychiatrist, right? I don't see another nigga fly as this, right? I'm the type to bring a knife to a fist fight. So imagine what I'll bring to a knife fight. Shine bright V. Alright guys, so this is the first video in the Java library series. Um, we pretty much finished um, the core language of Java. Not completely. I didn't go over every everything, like modules and stuff like that. But I'll be going over that in the future. Don't worry. It's because it's a newer future, so that's why I didn't really go over it that much. But we pretty much covered everything, almost. Like, a good amount. So you're pretty much good to go on that since. But now we're going to move on to the Java library, which is a huge part of Java. Which we have, you know, stuff like the collections uh, framework and just stuff like that. And it's just really big. And it allows you to do many, many things within your Java development, okay? So anyway, to get it started off, we're going to cover strings. And I know we've worked with strings before. I've made a video on it. And um, it's pretty simple. But we still want to have an in-depth overview of how to use strings, how to make strings, and everything like that, okay? So this episode, I'm going to show you pretty much every way in which you can create a string object. And then the next episodes, I'll be showing you the methods that you can use to uh, work with strings, okay? So yeah, let's get right into it. So the first thing you have to understand is that a string is not like a primitive data type. It's not, you know, like an int. It's not an integer. It's not the same thing as an integer. A string is an object, okay? But yeah, they're objects, so that's pretty cool, right? So they're a little different than actual primitives. They can do much more. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's it. But you have to understand that strings by themselves, just this regular string objects, are immutable, meaning they cannot change once you create one, okay? But you might be wondering, like I was, um, how can you say that it's unchangeable if we can simply do bob is equal to uh, something like this, right? We can literally change the value. Where th well, the thing is, you're actually changing it. Like, string bob is equal to blah, blah, blah is, um, is creating a new object, of course, of the string class. But, but once we reassign it, it's actually creating a whole new object. It's not reassigning the object. It's creating a whole new object. So this would be the same thing as saying uh, new, st well, actually right here. So if we have this object here, it would be the same thing as saying new string, right? That's creating a whole totally new object, okay? So that's what's happening right there, all right? So once we learn about the string buffer and the string builder, those are the ones that can be changed. Like the actual physical object can be changed. Those are mutable strings, okay? So anyway, these are called immutable because they cannot be changed. So you just have to understand that a little bit. So an example of that could also be if we do string 1 is equal to A, B, C, D, and then string 2 is equal to A, B, C, D, these are actually assigned to the very same object, okay? That's the way strings work. So th these are actually two different variables, but they're actually same to the same, uh, assigned to the same object, okay? So that means that in the memory somewhere in your, in your system, there's one object containing the value of A, B, C, D. There's no point in assigning two different objects with the same value. That's the way Java works. It's very nice in that way, okay? So let me pull up an image so you can see what I'm talking about. So here's an example of what I was talking about. We have two... Um, you know, string reference variables, but they're assigned to one object because in the heap, you know, the memory thingy, majiggy, it has one of that value because there's no point in making two of them. That just wastes space, right? So that's why, you know, Java is so magical. It can, you know, save space by making strings immutable and stuff like that, okay? So that's just one little feature I wanted to show you before we got started, really. So whenever you're making a normal string, of course, you might do string bob is equal to um, something like this, right? Bob. You know, that's literally, that's fine, right? That's fine. But behind the scenes, it's actually making an object. It's converting it to an object for you. So behind the scenes, it actually will look something like this. New string bob, like that, okay? It's actually creating an actual object because strings, again, are objects, okay? But normally, you won't want to do, you know, an actual full string inside of the new string, um, what's it called, uh, constructor, okay? You only want to put character arrays and stuff like that inside the constructor. But we're going to go over that next, okay? But anyway, so what this is called, whenever you put it just like this, that's called a literal, a string literal, because behind the scenes, it's converting all of these three characters into an actual string object, okay? So anyway, that's just what that is. So that's one way of assigning strings. But the next way of assigning strings is going to be um, character arrays. So let me show you. So string, we can call it whatever you want. You can call it chars uh, string. So chars string is equal to 
new string because of course we're making a new string object and if the thing doesn't show up you can do control p to see all the parameters and you can see that these are all the different values that you can put in to make a new string object okay and one of them the first one pretty much is this is a character array okay so that's going to be an array of characters an array of letters so that's basically what a string is it's a it's a collection or not it's an array of letters behind the scenes okay so that's how strings work so if we go ahead and make a str array of characters here we can do that so uh, car char whatever you want to call it letters is equal to d i e just like that so that's what our character array looks like so if we plug this in here we can make a string by it okay so we're able to turn this uh, array of characters into an actual string okay so that's going to pretty much add them all together and then set them equal to this new object um, of char screen, uh, string. So if we print this out, we could print out the value of what we what we just made here. So this is a new string object, and we just made it, and we're printing it out, and then we get die, right? Because that's what we put inside of here. So like I said, strings are made up of different chars or whatever you want to call them, added together to make a full word. Basically, they're added behind the scenes, I guess you could say, or concatenated. So anyway, that's the first way in which you can make a string just by putting a character array, right? But the next way is actually pretty cool too. You can use you can use a character array, but you can put in more values than just, uh, you know, the single parameter, right? You can actually add some more stuff. So if you do control P to see what the values are, you can add an offset, okay? And your offset is going to be what um, index in this little array here you want to start at whenever you're making this new object. So let's say we want to start at I and then go to E, right? We would put two, uh, 1 because it's 0 based, so 0, 1, 2. So if we want to start at I, we put 1. And then next is going to be your count, okay? So how many letters from that letter do you want to um, add to this new string object? It's going to be 2 if we want to include both of these. So 1, 2. So if we put 2 in here, let's see what happens if it prints out. So uh, stat, there we go. Let's print that out and see what we get. We should get IE. And we get IE because we started at I, the index of 1, and then went uh, the count of 2. So it was 1, 2, just like that, okay? So that's another way in which you can define a string object. Pretty cool stuff, right? So by the way, if you want to leave a string object empty for some reason, it doesn't matter why, but if you want to do that, you could simply just leave it empty like that. You're going to get a warning because it's the same thing as actually doing this, but that's just a string literal still. So if you want to make an actual physical string object, you know, empty, that's how you do it, just like this, okay? Just have no parameters. So another way to make strings is actually um, similar to the, the to the character array, but instead you're using bytes. So you're going to use a byte array. So if you do control P, you can see that one of the things here is a byte array, right? And so a byte array is going to be basically all the ASCII values, right? We've already done this before a long time ago, pretty much in the series. So if we do a byte array, we can put a bunch of values in here. So we can start at 66, 67, 68, 69. 70 and basically if you remember these are coded to their ASCII values so 66 will be a letter in ASCII table um, and then 67, 68, 69, 70 and so we can plug this in here we can plug that byte array inside of here and let's see what it prints out remember these are going to be translated behind the scenes to their ASCII values and now we get BC, B, C, D, E, F okay and so that means that 65 would be A of course because you know it's before B right so anyway that's how you do that you can use a byte array to make a string object also, basically like the character array, you can use a subrange, okay? That's called a subrange whenever you start at a certain letter and then go by how many you want to go by. So if we want to start at, um, we want to start at D, for example, we go 0, 1, 2. So we start at 2. And then how long do we want to go? We want to go 3. So if we want to go all the way to F, 70, we want to go to 3. So let's print that out and see what we get. Remember, that's called a subrange when you only want a certain amount of the string to be made or, you know, used. So D, E, F would be that subrange, right? You start at 2 index of two and then go one two three pretty cool stuff right so that's the third or maybe the fourth way in which you probably the sixth way in which you make a string object and so those are pretty much the main simple ways in which you can make a string object okay you can use a string literal a character array which is going to be the same thing as a string literal basically because a string literal uh, behind the scenes is going to be a bunch of letters added together into a string object and then a, str and then a character array is going to be a bunch of letters added together to make a string object okay they're pretty much the same thing right and then, of course, after that, you have bytes, which are going to be converted to their ASCII values, you know, the letters or whatever it corresponds to on the ASCII table. And then those eventually will be made into a string value, a string object. 
And then you could, of course, have a subrange of the character array or the byte array, okay? And there's some more stuff you can use for making string objects. If you do control P, you can see that there's, oops, control P, you can see that there's other values in here that you can use. So likewise, um, besides all these, you can use a string buffer, which is another object we're going to be learning about um, in a couple episodes, and also string builder, okay? You can use those to make, you can convert those strings into a, basically a regular string, okay? By the way, since a string literal is the same thing as a string object, because it's behind the scenes being converted to a string object, um, we can actually do the same methods we can do on a normal string, right? So let me show you. If we do dot length or put a dot at the end of it, we need to do all of these methods, okay? And these are all the same methods that you would be able to do on a normal string object um, initialization. So that's pretty cool. Just an example of how, just an example to prove that it is a string object. So since we learned Powering about off. the main ways into, in which to create strings, we can also show you about string concatenation, which is something we already went over, but it's better to explain it again just in full detail. So if we make a string age is equal to string of 10, right? This is, remember this is a string, not a number, right? And then if we make a string sentence and do something like this, Bob is age years old, okay? So what's happening behind the scenes is, well, actually literally what's happening is you have one string here added it with two other strings, right? So we have three strings total, right, inside of this little um, operation, okay? So what it's doing, what Java is doing for you is taking all of these three strings, adding them together, which is called concatenation, and then converting the result of all of this, all of this addition into a string object, okay? So this is another way, yet another way to create a string object just by concatenating a bunch of, you know, strings together, okay? And let's say this is an integer. We can convert, you can change this to an integer like that. This would still be valid because what's happening here, whenever you um, whenever you use a primitive type, any of the primitive types within a string operation, meaning that it's added with other strings, and you see the plus sign here, it's automatically going to be converted to a string version of it. So it's the same thing as doing age dot to string if you could do that, but it's not an object, so you can't really do that. And it's only when you're adding them, by the way, it can only be converted to its string whenever you're adding them. Whenever you're using um, primitive types within string operations, they will can be they will be converted to the string value, okay? So if we do um, system.out.println, we can print out sentence, and we'll see that it indeed works inside of here. Uh, is it running? Nope, it's not running. Now it's running. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And now it says Bob is 10 years old. Of course, we need a space here, but yeah, it works. But something also important is order of operations, okay? So if we were to do something like this, let's get rid of all this. Uh, string um, potato is equal to... Um, let's see, 22, okay? And if we were to do something like this, 2 plus 2, you might think in your head that this would actually be 4, and then 4 would be added to the value of the string, right? Or to the string, and then all of that would be added together, right? But that's not the case. Let me show you. So if we print this out, we get 22. Uh, colon 22. That's because what's happening, like I said, whenever you add a primitive type to a string with a plus, that's automatically going to convert these primitive types to the string, um, you know, version, right? So on the other hand, if you were to put a parentheses around here, it would actually print out four. Okay, so let's change this. So let me show you. It would print out four, even though it's added with the string. So that defies my rule a little bit, but the reason is it's because of operator precedence. Okay. That means that um, if you think about order of operations in math, right? Usually, when you have a parentheses around something in, you know, a math operation or expression, you usually want to do that part of the expression first because it has a parentheses around it. You know, order of operations. So what's happening is it sees the parentheses and it's going to do um, this operation first because two is being added to two. Two is not being added to a string, so it doesn't have to convert these two to their corresponding string version. Okay, so it's going to be converted to four. And then once that's done, it's got basically behind the scenes going to be converted to four like this. And so four now needs to be added to the string. So since you're adding a primitive type to a string, four will be converted to its primitive type. I mean, a string type, right? So that's pretty much what's happening. Hopefully, hopefully you understand that a little bit. It's not too complex, but just understand that's something that'll happen basically whenever you're coding. So hopefully I'm not going too fast, but it's pretty simple stuff. So finally, before I end this episode, I know it was pretty simple stuff, but uh, I want to show you a cool little example here. You know, because string is a object. So if we make a class here, class we'll call it cow, and then we'll give it some initial values. So actually, we'll give it some variables with no initial value. So int milk, and then int, oops, int milk, and then int udders. 
Okay, and then we'll make a constructor. So cow, int, milk, int, udders, and then milk, I mean, this dot milk is equal to milk. And this dot udders, I cannot type, is equal to udders. Okay, so that's just a simple constructor. And let's see what happens. I'm gonna show you something. So cow, cow1 is equal to new cow. Just like that. And we can set the value of we can set the value of this parameter here, this constructor. So we can do like that and then just that. Okay, so just some random values. And let's see what happens when we print out cow1, okay? Okay, and we get this weird little thing here. So something you have to understand is whenever you print out objects, they're automatically be going to be converted to their string version, okay? So basically behind the scenes, it's going to be doing two string for you, okay? Uh, implicitly, it's going to be doing that for you. So if we print out, you know, with the two string, it's going to print out the same thing because, like I said, whenever you print an object, it's going to convert it to a string. So yeah, we get the same thing, right? So something you might want to do is actually override the two string method within this object here. So let's try that out. So public string two string and then we can do whatever we want so return uh, something like, let's put something random here so moo and then we can say milk milk and uh, then others and then plus others and so what's happening here is basically we overrided the two string method, which is a method that every object has. And then we're saying it, we're making it have a custom output value, which is going to basically replace this ugly thing here because it's just ugly. So we want to make our own value, right? That's why we're overriding it in the first place. So what this is going to do is give us a custom view whenever we print out this little object here or a custom uh, output, whatever. So let's try doing that. So now we get moo, milk, uh, 231, and udders, 123. So that's pretty cool, right? We now can, you know, choose what the string value of a object is going to be, okay? So that's just an example of something you could do in that case. But anyway, that's it pretty much for, you know, making string objects. You know, there's a bunch of ways you can use character array, string literals, byte array, uh, stuff like that. So if you have any questions about what we did, you can ask a comment in the comment section. I know this episode was short and probably a little boring because it was kind of simple. But uh, we had to go over it, you know, just get the fundamentals down. And so the next episodes, we start to get a little more interesting. We'll start working with methods that come with the string objects so we can do some more cool stuff, okay? So, yeah, if you have any questions, like I said, ask in the comment section. If uh, you want to, also, if you want to join our Discord, there's a link in the description for you to join that. And uh, yeah, so also we have a link here to the description, inside the description, which is going to be all of the code from today's episode. So make sure you check that out and bookmark for future reference because sometimes you forget stuff like I do, okay? So, anyway. Um, if you like this video, leave a like if you want to see more, subscribe, and peace.